W113 Pagoda SL Group, 2007 Tech Session in Black Lick, Ohio. About 100 Pagoda enthusiasts from across the states and a half dozen other countries once again came together in the backyard of Joe and Mary Alexander for a fun show and tell experience. Here, Michel Gendron talks with Bruce Peterson about his 280 overheating problem and the result after installing a head coolant recirculating kit. You know, pointing and just resting on top of that lower white button and if I was in traffic it would very quickly go up past the white button right into the red. If I didn't do anything it w I would have blown the engine and I had to put the heater on and uh, put the car in neutral, try to manage it and all that and eventually I couldn't stop for very long, more than three, four, five minutes at the same corner. This is what kind of if weather? I was on drive, oh like uh, 85, 80 degrees, so which is not that hot. It's, it's hot in Montreal, it's not that hot. Today on the highway it's the same, it just rests on the bottom white dot if I'm in really heavy traffic and, and, and waiting, for example, we waited at customs, we waited at the uh, toll boots uh, twice for quite a long time, and it'll, it'll go up very, very, it takes time, it'll take three, four, five minutes before it starts going up, and then it'll go up very, very slowly, and it'll stand between the 180 and the, the, the upper button. It doesn't go to the upper white. Uh, this is the uh, Mercedes uh, uh, cooling kit, the uh, recirculation kit. It takes the water from the back of the head straight back to the radiator. And what it is, it's a pipe which is bolted in where this sensor was prior. And there's a Y on it and the sensor is bolted at the end of the Y. This pipe goes underneath the engine all the way to the other side, straight into the radiator up front. Tom came to Blacklick in his very nice 280 SL, a 280 with a unique vintage BorgWarner R10 overdrive. Tom averaged more than 20 miles per gallon during his Montreal Blacklick round trip, and with about 30% reduction in engine RPMs, he says a much more comfortable drive. The BorgWarner R10 overdrive has over the years been attached to a variety of domestic transmissions. Tom's unit, seen here, was originally coupled to a 1963 Rambler. Tom's modified shafts made this unit just the right length to replace the 280's stock front drive shaft. There was a lot of engineering and a lot of ingenuity that went into Tom's installation. Very nice job. Read in much more detail about Tom's installation in our Pagoda World magazine, distributed to all dues paying members. Hint, hint. Gernold of SL Tech has, over the years, generously provided us his expertise and help with our W113 upgrades and restorations. This day, Gernold brought the exciting Mechatronic 280SL right into Joe's backyard, a car that most of us would normally only get to read about. Gernold explained that the Mechatronic restoration is a total nut and bolt redo topped off with modern technology upgrades that include a V6 engine and very smooth 5-speed automatic transmission. The amazing part is that the conversion was accomplished while maintaining the integrity of the original 280SL structure. No major surgery. If someone really felt the need, this car can be refitted with all the original components. Except for the heated seats, electric windows, and a shifter lever, things look pretty much like stock. What's really different, however, is the modern car performance. Do you want to go 130 miles per hour or 0 to 62 under 8 seconds with a quiet, smooth ride, all the time looking great? Let Gerald know. He can probably arrange it. Anybody happen to eat one of these? Not sure. New old stock. It's uh, uh, automatic. Uh, Local safety switch. Safety. Yeah. Peter Lester always has a collection of stuff that Ray and others can't do without.
and then you twist it once through back again and then into this guy and then you just twist it down but the idea the reason why you do that is so you don't have a sharp edge mm -hmm. that can cut into the hose oh yeah yeah you can spend two years trying to find a $50 solution by going through all these little things only to find out two years down the line it was your steering box. Now it's $9.75 right. yeah. <laughs> and you not lived two years with a bad steering situation. But but you okay. It was, you know, it, it was good with, with the pick. Then, then you break it open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you did. Look what oh, a beautiful yeah. job they did before. They just oh. patch it on top of it. Then you just pull the patch off. Pull the patch. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it is, David. Well, my guess was the 387. But, yeah. Michael with this pristine red pagoda, Thomas' slides of his major reclamation project, and the other pagoda owners enthusiastically share their unique owner experiences. But there are also the professionals like Dan, Jernold, and of course Joe, who contribute so much to this backyard experience. Um, our names are uh, Graham Creasy and Laura Holmes. Uh, we feel very fortunate that we just happened to get this car right at the time of the meeting. Uh, we're very appreciative of all the generosity everybody has shown us with the information that um, so many experts have here. So we feel very um, lucky to have been part of this gathering. It's a very friendly, informal, and uh, uh, unsnobbish group. It's very willing to share its information. I appreciate that.